Well, we need them extra few minutes because Nia ain't put lotion on this morning, y'all. Bus time, he just drove right by it from the other direction. I don't know what's going on. Maybe he passed another kid's house or something. He had to go around the block and go back and get him. I don't know. But um, we'll take them a couple minutes this morning, y'all. We still gonna get him on time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Nia. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, I guess it just bothers me because I used to be a bus driver. And I used to drive for a couple different districts. Like I drove for the city of Rochester. And I remember when I was driving for the city of Rochester, you couldn't pick kids up early. You could not pick, even though the policy was to have the child outside 10 minutes prior, you could not pick kids up early. I remember one time I was picking this kid up and I had been having ongoing issues with this young lady for not being ready. And I remember getting to the stop waiting my five minutes like i think i waited like five minutes like i remember waiting well after her stop time and she never came out and i left and she was the first stop on the bus i went through the entire bus route y'all the entire freaking bus route only to get to school to get a call from dispatch telling me to go all the way back to that child's house now mind you the school was across town so i had gotten through the entire route and then had to drive across town to drop them babies off you know a whole hour worth of driving then happened in the time that i got the call from dispatch so i get the call from dispatch i'm heated i'm over the radio i'm being unprofessional I'm supposed to, you know, just agree to whatever they say because they're paying me. You know what I'm saying? That's what I didn't realize back then. I was just in the moment, upset, knew I had followed the guidelines, knew I had did what I was supposed to do as a bus driver, and I was still being told to go back. I was so upset. I was livid. And for whatever reason, because of how I was speaking on the radio, she asked me to see her when I got in. And I was like, fine, whatever. So... I goes back, so I get the kid, the kid comes out, I take the kid to school mad late, the, cool, the kid gets to school like an hour and so late, and I get back to, you know, I take my bus back to the yard, and I pull in, and I go in and I see the dispatcher, which is also the assistant manager of the terminal. So I go in, and I see her, she's a real cool lady, Jody. she real cool, like that was one of the coolest dispatcher slash managers that I ever drove for like she was down to earth wrote me a letter when I left the job was willing to take me back at any cost if I ever wanted to come back after I left the job but um rewind she um was like listen Brett. she was like the city calls us the city tells us to tell you to go back the city's paying us we're paying you you gotta go back and she made it so simple for me. And I'm just like, you're right. You're right. I can't even argue with you. You know, I can't even bring up the policy. I can't even talk about this. I can't even talk about that. You're paying me to do a job. They're, the city's paying y'all to do a job. We all have a job to do, which is to get these children to and from school safely. So let me just do my job, do what I got to do so this baby can get to school safely. But it really just had me live it. And then when I turn around and look at myself as a parent going through many struggles boarding my children on the bus as a parent and having to deal with the situations I the situations I used to have to deal with driving the bus. It's just crazy. It's like a real eye opener. You know what I'm saying? My kids board at three different locations. You know, three different children. They board the buses at three different locations. One of my daughters have to walk a street over onto this main busy road that y'all have seen before because I've put it on the camera. Um and then my other daughter has to walk two streets the, the other direction and down another street to get on at the first house and then my other daughter boards at somebody else's house both of those stops kids come out the door at the house that the children are waiting at and their group stops and then my baby the one that just got on the bus the one i've been showing getting on the bus she um boards right next door three different times three different kids three different schools and listen it's never a dull moment it's never a dope moment. I don't know what the hell that just was, you know, where the bus came down the street the opposite way, come down, you know, it came down at 12 after when it's been here as early as nine after. And 
did an okie doke and came back three minutes later. Like, what? What the hell is going on? What's going on? Because I just know where my mind was as a school bus driver. And I was always very passionate about getting them kids to school on time. So I used to enjoy running my route five minutes early. And I used to tell my parents. And, you know, I feel like for the most part, most parents were very cooperative. But you always get that one parent that don't want to cooperate. So I used to run my route five minutes early so that if anything happened, you know, where a kid was taking a little longer or anything like that, we wouldn't lose any time getting to school. We would always get to school on time, you know, and that was the goal. The goal was to get the babies to school on time, safely, without having to rush, without having to make up minutes here and make up minutes there because kids are lagging out the door and they're not ready. Because you always got little Johnny that ain't ready. You always got little Susie that's not ready. You know, you're always going to have that one kid that's just not ready ever. No matter what you do to prepare that parent, they're never ready. You know, so I get both sides. I get both ends of the spectrum. You know, when you talk about the school bus drivers, when you talk about the parents, when you talk about the lack of support and the gap between the two, you know, you got to realize as a school bus driver and as a parent, and now I can safely say this because I've been on both sides of the spectrum, is you got a team. You, the teacher and the parent, the bus driver, the teacher and the parent, y'all are all on the same team, just like the mother and father raising that child. You know, they used to tell us in training, you know, you're the first person that child sees when they start their day and you're the last person they see from the world. You know what I'm saying? From their day, you're the first person that they see besides their parents, you know, when they board the bus in the morning. And then when they go home at night, you're the last person they see. You know what I'm saying? So try to make it their best. And I always used to do my best. Like, y'all, I went above and beyond on my job as a school bus driver like above and beyond and that's why I don't have the job now because I was too emotional about the job I was too attached to the job and I literally would risk my job you know for the safety and well-being of those those children you know and it just mm -mm, mm -mm, it, it just wasn't good anymore like it wasn't good anymore the lack of support from the district the lack of support from the parents it was just very stressful very, very stressful. So I left school bus driving only to go on to city bus driving, which I thought would be better. And y'all stay tuned for that story time. Like I got a story time coming from driving the city bus. So I'm gonna give y'all, listen, I got story times for days. And I know that's what people here on YouTube enjoy is story times. So I'm gonna give y'all more and more story times. My struggle is learning how to title these story times. So if you got any advice, any opinions, any suggestions on how to title, you know, videos, I'm always looking for content on that. And um, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to share that experience with y'all because sometimes people get the wrong idea. You know, if you're not, if you're a school bus driver, you can't see what's going on in somebody else's house, you know? And as a parent, you don't know what that driver has been told, trained, you know, learned, or, you know, is in fear of or feeling like they got lack of support of you know you just don't know what what's going through that driver's mind you know so the best thing you can do is have a strong communication and bond with your kids bus drivers so both I talked to both bus drivers of my younger two children this year so far I haven't I don't really have no issues with Harmony Harmony get on that bus mind her business go sit down she there early. She don't play no games. Like, I've never had any issues with Harmony and boarding a school bus since kindergarten. So I don't worry about her so much. But with me and Nene, I have to be on it. And then my Kayla and Serenity will never step up on a bus to go to a public school. Like, they will be homeschooled by their mama like they are now. You know, they're one and three and they're already being homeschooled by their mom. So they're not going to stop being home educated by their mom. I'm, I'm going to educate them every single day of their lives until I'm gone. You feel me? But I thank y'all for listening to me rant this morning. I love y'all. God loves y'all. Remember to always put him first and everything you do will prosper. And I will see y'all on the next a video. Remember, I don't know if I said I love you. God loves you. But yeah, I think I did. Love y'all. Bye. Later.